Nog's Box for all your gaming, modelling and box opening needs. Hi guys, welcome to Nox Box. I am Nock himself and with me tonight is Cordial Bob. Good evening. Tonight we have uh, from a wonderful company called Westwind, Westwind Productions. Yep. They make a skirmish game called Empire of the Dead. And it's a kind of, it's a game where you, you build your faction. So you yep. start off with, I think you start with 150 shillings, because it's a Victorian based game. Yeah. And you create a faction with that. So you buy the, uh, the leader, the different people in your faction, and then you equip them out. Yeah. And then it's a game you play uh, lots of small encounters with each other. So it's a skirmish game. Oh, it's a sort of living game. It's a living game, yes. Yeah, you level you up have afterwards. your roster and they yeah. build and get experience or injuries and such. Uh, absolutely. The injuries are great and they have long-lasting effects. You can be invested, I believe. It's a really cool game cool. system. And they've sent us a bunch of stuff to look at. So, start with... The rule book. The rule book. Now, I've got to flick through this. I quite like some of the artwork. I thought it? the artwork was really good. I, I like, like it. the steam train that's glowing red. Oh, that's Infernium. Yes. I believe that's the... We'll get to yeah. a bit more of that later we'll on. We'll do background shortly. Right, so that's the rule book. It's sort of Victorian with a dash of steampunk and occultism. Absolutely. Right, actually, we'll leave that for special edition thing. Whee! Starter set. So they sent us a Bobby's starter set, which mm. are police guys, yes. but it's the Supernatural Blanche. With so, pan portable gatling guns. Who wouldn't want Victorian ghost-busting policemen? Well, I, I want love werewolves. It. You're, of course you want werewolves, you lycanthrope you. <laughs> I am a great fan of werewolves, and this you get wolves, you get thralls, you get people running around without their kit on. It's perfect. It's quite amusing. Right, should we crack the boxes open? Okay. Oh, and then we also have a oh. super special edition Professor Erasmus they sent us. We'll so, talk more about him later. Yeah, on massive well. thank yous to the guys. Let's crack open the boxes. Okay, we'll start with Bobby's then. Okay, so we're going to start with the Bobby's set one. Now, if I quickly just grab the werewolves, you'll have noticed that this is Empire of the Dead, and this is Empire of the Dead Requiem. Oh, which okay. Is the, this is the original set of factions. This is, I believe... Oh, yes, they had a Kickstarter for this. Yes. So that's the original ones. Yeah. This is from the first add-on, Requiem, which, well, technically it's coming soon... But we may have a really sneaky early beta test copy to look at. Yeah, I about to say it's in beta at the minute. Isn't yes, it? it is. So this is a 28 mil non-heroic scale, which is always very nice. So it's not the stupid hand. And it's metal, not resin. Yes, which that, is that's nice. odd nowadays, actually, isn't it? But it's very uncommon due to the pricing. I like metal though. It has it's that a nice weight to it, it but does. the other side effect is the chance of chipping and things like that. Yeah, and actually it can also be detailed as well. I'll, I'll be interested to see, especially with the fur on your lichens. Let's yes, have a wolves. look. Wolves, I'll have to watch out I wonder if they'll have the triangular GW fur. Well, look. <laughs> you want me to beat you to death with your own bobbies. <laughs> now, bobbies. Right, okay. Now, this is one okay. thing I do Fine. really like about the packaging. This is actually quite a cunning thing, because when I show you some of the makeup ones later on, I'll show you how I transport how we've been transporting them. Okay, cool. So, let's start with Ooh. Man with Shotgun. Nice, Man with Shotgun. So these are the different bobbies. Perambulator Boots. A cannon that fires nets. A man portable oh, flash, gatling yeah. gun. There's very little. There is, I was just looking there, you've got the one pouring point. But actually, that's really good. Oh my God, look at the detail on this moustache. That moustache looks amazing. The hair and the clothes has some rather excellent... Small model there. line, but these should clean up nicely. Very nicely. Very so actually little. they're mostly one-piece models. Yes, I only a couple of them I've seen so far in the entire range are more than one piece. Wow, the pewter's so bright I can't quite zoom in on it. They look really good. Yeah. Right. Show us the made ones, Rob. I know these are mostly one-pieces. But yeah. I know you have been slaving away. <laughs> I'm going to deny all knowledge whatsoever. Now, like these that. ones, rather than being on... Oh, the bases they come with are the 30mm lip Slaughter. standard slotters. As always, we hate slotters. So, we instantly looked around, and Westwind themselves do an amazing kind of um, resin-made cobblestone bases. Now, the other and use so... for your box. Ah, oh, because I'm lazy. Oh, that's cunning, so you can still keep them in the box. 
Oh, and look, we can see them all. No, no, that's perfect. You can see them perfectly like that? Oh, that's perfect. Look at the bases. So those are the, those are the cobblestone bases. Yeah. So we've got a Bobby with a shotgun. Bobby with a... Oh, with a net launcher. Another hunting rifle shotgun. Can you turn him over? Actually, he's upside down. Kind of an upside down Bobby. Oh, he looks good. Those he's on one him. hand and the other hand's like this. That is like... so nonchalant, isn't it? <laughs> Werewolf. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that, but... Yeah. Oh, that's the bullseye lantern to Which see if you put night. You, you can target an opponent and then all your side can shoot the opponent without minus modifiers. Oh, fantastic. Which oh, yes, you've got reduced little... range at night, don't you? Yeah. Yes, which is a little disgusting if someone next to you is holding the man portable gatling gun. Oh, oh the thunk, man portable... Thunk, 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 thunk. Would that be this beast of a weapon? That is. Wow, that looks amazing. And then there's pistol, but there's, I believe yep. there's a selection of pistols. There are, yes, heavy and light. Oh, and that's the that, that, that's the big boss in charge, the inspector? DCI? Yeah, the inspector. The inspector. So you get all of those in the starter set. In fact, is that seven? Are we missing one? Um, we are. Have you left one out? So yes, after a quick look around, those are seven of the eight bobbies. Rob totally didn't leave one on the workshop. In the uh, in the store. It's right. Miguel's going to paint it tomorrow while he's playing some other games. Absolutely. But that is the amazing guy, and we have seen him loose. And how does he look once you stick him onto a base, Rob? Does he look good? I was a bit concerned because he was one foot higher than the other, and it's got a bit of a gap. But it sits in really nicely on the base, so that's good. Perfect. It's one of those where you tweak the base just a little bit, and it slots in. It gets rigid. It's not bad. Nice. They all cleaned up really nicely because, as we saw with the previous set. The very, very little flash on it, so that's really nice to work with. That is. Right, okay. Werewolves! Yeah, best faction. <clears throat> cool. Um, yeah. Are you going to show us the art on the back? I am. I really Ooh. like the um, actual, because if you can actually see some of the fur detail on there. Actually, yeah, those are good. I wonder if that, yeah, but these might just be best case now. So let's look at the actual models. But that, that fur does look good. It looks promising. But it's not triangular stripey like GW. Could you, could you, could Excuse you me, I'm going to throw this box you in here. <laughs> you desist. That is not fur. That is someone being bored with architecture. <laughs> right. Now. Let's get a wolf straight away in the hand. Oh, these are wolves. Okay. Fur, that's always the telltale. Oh my god, that's amazing. They're really good. That's excellent. Look at the... And it's blended in with the tail and how it goes down to the feet. I know, yeah, the paws, it's... Oh, wow, I'm really impressed. Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit shocked, actually. It'll I wasn't expecting really nice that. really nice dry brush. Uh, they'll react really nicely to inking. Um, you might, you could do some feathering with individual hairs if you want to do old ones, so with greyer muzzles and things like that. Absolutely. It comes up really, really nicely. There's hardly any flash either. Is this one just nope. as good? Yeah, it's just a little bit of flash on the tails. But it's like how they've worked down to the legs and stuff like that's really nice. It is. I'm really impressed with those. The muzzles look smart. Yeah. I, I really like those. Those are great. Right. There are other models as well. So these are the wolf skins with a variety of weapons. So that a crossbow. Yeah, that guy's got a crossbow. Oh, look at his hat. Oh, the, their faces are amazing. Yeah. So yeah, that guy's got a crossbow. That one looks like he should be running around with Molotov cocktails. I love where they managed to get a feral look on the jaw bones. And he's got a pair of uh, knives. Yeah. So that's cool. This guy's got a bow. And again, he's got the amazing mutton chops. They all have that feral look about them. You can clearly see that they're thralls for lichen throats, can't you? And then the wolf and claws, which give you, I believe, an additional attack on the charge. Additional? Oh, nice. They yeah. look really smart. And then... Oh, so that is the... Um, Pack leader. Pack, pack leader. Yeah, the he's, pack leader. He's still got some of his clothes on. Yes, he has. Ripping through. You can see the transformation. That but I like really how they've good. done the fur on his arms. Yeah, on the top of it. It's like it's breaking through the flesh. Uh, there. I'm very impressed with these. And that's the Beastmaster. He's, like, he's the biggest one in there, isn't he? Yeah. He's quite a size. I'll be interested to see if there's I other ones in this one. faction. Look at that. Yeah. Because I know they're adding to this. Selection. These are excellent. Now, have you got these made up as well? I've got a box of these made up. As Do we well. have all eight of these ones, Rob? <laughs> we do. We do. Oh, fantastic! It's looking good. <laughs> Sorry, boxes and boxes. We love getting stuff. Massive thank you to Westwind for these. Not 
was happy as Miguel will be when he has to paint them all. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, you've cut off the extra bit so they actually are up. Uh, but sorry, by that I mean his foot. You've cut off the bits that would la uh, that would have it stood on the grass on the other piece. Well, there's no point having him stood on the grass on the cobblestone. These cobblestone bases are excellent, actually, aren't they? Some of the resin bases out on the market are really good now. These are actually done by Westwood in house. Oh, really? These, these are, are official ones, for are these figures. Yeah. Nice. Because actually, does that stand up? Yes, he does. With that one, I'd probably put a two pence piece underneath just to wait it. An offset. Oh yeah, you pin them all. That makes sense. Yeah. To be fair, it's standing up okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. As, I like the move when they actually get in that pose. As long as it's a flat surface, they should be fine. I like these. <laughs> you like the wolves. Ah. Yeah. They look really good. Yeah, I was very impressed by them. Yeah, and I love the way that you can use the boxes to carry them around in as well. Right, guys, you've seen the actual figures. Now the rule book. This first rule book, this is the starting one. This is the starting one. This is the official rule book. Yeah. And in it, you have all the rules and all the options to make all the starting factions. That's that four. Four. So that's the vampires, the werewolves, the gentlemen's club. And the holy order? Yes. And the knights. The knights, yeah. That is yeah. It, yeah. But what there also is, is sub-factions. So the Gentleman Adventures Club actually has the the, the um, Sons of the Empire and, and the Brimstone like Club, and yeah. so you've got different takes on those base kind of. These are the four basic styles, but actually you've got loads of options in there, and you've also got we've got well, well here's your selection yeah. of weapons, close combat weapons, specialized weapons, and exotic weapons. Like every man needs a spirit cannon. Who doesn't need a spirit cannon? Pneumatic state. So to start the game off, you make your uh, army or your 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 gang. Is there, is there an official name for them or your gang? So you have a gang and you've got 150 shillings to purchase your gang from, and that includes all the people, all of their equipment, or any of their armor and upgrades like that. And that generally ends up with about five to seven figures in your opening gang. Once you've made your gang, you find somebody else who has also created a gang, and you sit down for a game. The first thing you do is you roll to see where the game is going to take place. Now there are four places the game can take place. If we can switch towards the end. Okay. Is this... I believe the four places, if I remember offhand, I don't know if you can try to find it, it should be just after there I think. Ah, oh, here we go, Sad. playing a game. Playing a game, so determine which scenario is to be played. Location, here we go. You've okay. got the sewers which is uh, underground, so you've got uh, no sunlight down there. So people like the vampires and the werewolves get a, a, a bonus. Uh, we don't get a bonus because no full moon. Oh, of course, no full moon. You don't get the bonus, no, but no vampires do. Moons. And then you have the residential area, which is the kind of general um, Victorian London. Then you've got the business area, which I quite like because instead of business area, I'd go as a dockside area as well. Play because that is... Yeah, but that yeah. is where the um Because then you have Nemo and all that different things. Absolutely. Uh, he's one of the newer factions, so more um, the nautical theme thing. So you've got sewers as the first location. You've got town as the second, either the residential or the business area. Then you've got the countryside, if you want to play out and about. And then you have the botanical gardens of Professor Julius Forbes Talbot, which sounds amazing. And basically that is a garden, I get a bit like Kew Gardens, but it's got all sorts of exotic plants and they all have effects in game. And I like that. All the locations do affect the game itself. So yeah, you roll to see how many plants are what they do. plants. Awesome. So after you rolled for your, for where it takes place, you then roll for the scenario. So you've already got your forces designed and you roll to see what the scenario is. I believe there's... I think there's six different scenarios? Uh, there are five. No, there no, is... Six? Oh no, five, you are right. Lost Sorry. Artifact, Fracker, Blissful Ignorance, Entrapment and Prisoner. And each uh, mission has its own then separate role for how you deploy. And so there are five different uh, deployment ways, uh, deployment maps in total. But each scenario may only use a couple of them. So you randomise where, okay, where you're fighting. You randomise what your scenario is, then from that you randomise your deployment. 
which means you've got a stupidly large number of different games you can play with just those two basic sets, which I, really impresses me. And that's before you even think of add-ons. Exactly. And then, what, so once you've set all of that up, you then roll to see if it's daytime or nighttime. So you roll initiative, and then the highest roller gets to choose, which is really cool. Yeah. Once you've done initiative, you play the game through. And we'll do gameplay in a separate one, when we actually do a bit of a filming, I guess. Yeah. But the gameplay itself, I played two one through games, and it went really well. I was impressed. After the game, you then do the downtime, and this is what makes it a great game. The game itself is good, but afterwards, it's after the campaign. Here we go. So, uh, campaign so you've got a whole thing for campaign advancement. Now, this game shines in the campaign setting. So, after you've finished the game, you calculate your rewards, and then you count any additional rewards you get if you were fighting against the odds. So, if the opponent had a lot more points than you did, or a lot, sorry, was worth a lot more as a gang. Yeah. You then have to roll for the injuries, so everyone that's been hurt in the game, you actually want to see what that injury translates to for later on. Yeah. At which point you can choose to visit the doctor, or the pawnbroker, if you want to sell off at either things you found in game, or old equipment of your own, and the doctor yeah. obviously try to make you better. I don't think it'll always work, but you can try. Times when he'll make it work. There always are. <laughs> and then, then you roll for new skills and ability developments, so your actual characters grow. become characters in their own right. They yeah. grow and change. Which, to me, that is the key to the game. The sniper who's good at close combat. And and that's when you then... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, had that happen on more than one occasion. Other then games. you can recruit new members. Yeah. Then you can hire mercenaries. Mercenaries are amazing. And then you calculate how much you're worth, so you know when you're comparing against other forces. Yeah. So... An amazing system. My first query was, oh, in this book, I don't have the rules for the Supernatural Squad bobbies. Yeah. Which I chose because they look amazing. And so instantly, West Wind, amazing. They give us a sneak peek, so I can't go into too much detail. But this may or may not be a copy of the beta rules for their Requiem at the moment. So this is the Requiem is the first add-on for it, and in there it has all of the other gangs, so you've got the Bedlam Brotherhood, you've got the Clickers, yeah. you've got the Bobbies, you've got the Supernatural branch of the Bobbies, there's a whole load of other ones. And some of the Dark Cults and stuff as well, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. And then at the, that's the first half. The next chunk is all heroes. Well, not heroes, but they have a word for them. They're fiends and... Oh, what are they called? Think so. Uh, gentlemen and Jackanapes. Ah, I love it. It's characters. Characters. It's Gentlemen and Jackanapes, and they are all different characters. You can currently buy from their website in Blisters, exactly. like Professor Erasmus, and it gives you the rules for using those in-game, their actual stats, their own specific skills. It's really, it's really good. It covers everything. That would be quite interesting to have a look at. And then at the very back of there... I think there's going to be expansion with vehicles. So you can have actual kind of Victorian horse and carriage carts. Oh, right. And I, yeah, at some point, steampunk versions, uh, steam, uh, steam-powered versions, yeah. looks really good. Especially, I believe the clickers are mechanical. They are. The clickers are completely mechanical. That set's already out, isn't it? But the, the rules sets, has The set's out, out, but the rules are in here. Yeah. So all the base sets... The rules are completely in here. Yeah. And for the other ones, you can still make those characters yeah. from using the profiles in here yeah. and tweaking them. But in the very near future, I would expect to see this hitting shelves or PDFs somewhere soon. Yeah. The Gentleman and Jackanapes part of this is as a free download from their website at the moment. And the other rules, I believe they're currently the editors. So I don't think it'll be long before we get to see those in real life. Probably within the year then. I would think it would be yeah. a lot sooner than that. Yeah. I think you could count down soon for that one. Awesome. So, yeah. Really cool game. We'll look forward to playtesting that one. Absolutely. So, we'll playtest these new rules as well. And we might put a couple of them into a couple of scenarios we're playing. Yep. I believe we've still got some. Well, we had some left in stock. You sold them. Oh, don't. Yeah. That, uh, fantastic. I've never had such a positive response from, my, from the community. I, they turned up and s everyone that came in was like, oh, my God, these figures look amazing. Yeah. yeah, they are really good. They really capture you when you see them on the board as well. Everyone's already got their favourite faction. They do. Or two. A lot of people seem to have... They couldn't choose one. They had to choose two. Bedlam. Yeah. Oh. Anyway. Yeah, tempting. I intend to... Well, I say I. The shop intends to slowly gather 
most of the factions. So as they come, we'll unbox each one and we'll look at it and we'll talk about what they're good at. So two down. Two down. I think there's already 14 out. That's a huge amount. Anyway, good night guys. Until next time. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please do give it a like and please do share it.